Okay, this is direct oral tracheal innovation for the adult. Uh, first thing I want to do is check all my equipment, make sure I do have a BVM here with the mask in the reservoir. Uh, I can go ahead and attach it to high flow O2 there. I do have proper airway adjuncts here. I've got an OPA, properly sized it from the corner of the mouth down to the earlobe. I've got my suction unit here, portable suction with a flexible catheter there in case we need that. I've got my ET tube here, properly sized. It's going to be a 7.0 that we're going to use here. And then also have a syringe, a 10 mil syringe. I've checked my cuff, make sure there's no leaks with it and that it holds air. And then of course to make sure that I do have my catenography and that my laryngoscope is working, the bulb is tight and seems bright enough. All right. First thing I want to do is make sure I do have my PPE on, got my gloves on. If necessary, I'll have a face mask or goggles on. I'm going to uh, open my airway. I can either use the head tilt chin lift or the modified jaw thrust. Of course, any trauma, you want to be careful and you just use the modified jaw thrust and not the head tilt chin lift and maintain that neck and head in a neutral position. I'm going to take my OPA here and insert it in. Noting any gag reflex, make sure I do have an absence of gag reflex. Take my BVM, of course I'd have it attached to high flow of 2, 12 to 15 liters per minute. Get a good mask seal there and begin ventilating my patient. Do 10 to 12 breaths per minute, which would be one breath every 5 to 6 seconds. Checking for good chest rise and fall. Good lung compliance. It's time to go ahead and attach my SpO2 monitor to my patient and begin uh, monitoring that reading, trying to obtain a reading of SpO2 of greater than 95%. I'm gonna go ahead and let my partner take over uh, pre-oxygenating the patient while I get all my equipment ready, make sure everything's good to go. Uh, again, pre-oxygen, just uh, rate of 10 to 12 and maintain that SpO2 rating greater than 95%. All right. Once they're pre-oxygenated, make sure I do have my head positioned properly. Go ahead and pull out the OPA. Insert it in the laryngoscope. Of course, any trauma, you want to make sure we're not manipulating the neck at all. Inserting this down, since I'm using a mat blade, inserting the blade into the blecula, elevating the epiglottis until I can visualize the vocal cords. Pass the ET tube through the vocal cords, just visualizing the cuff passing through there. Go to remove that laryngoscope. Remove your stylet if you used it. Go ahead and inflate your cuff here. and remove the, the syringe from that. Make sure your, your bulb there is nice and tight. You can go ahead and put on your catenography at this time in between your BBM and your ET tube and begin ventilating your patient. Maintaining that rate of 10 to 12 breaths per minute. You're ch checking for good chest rise and fall. You also check for uh, waveform catenography or you can if you have a color metric device you want to check to make sure that you do have that gold color change. You're going to continue oxygenating the patient. You're going to auscultate lung sounds over both lung fields and then also over the epigastric, noting absent epigastric sounds. Once you've confirmed all that, you'll go ahead and make sure you've assessed for any hypoxia during the innovation attempt if there's any cyanosis around the lips or uh, if your SpO2 reading did drop down below 90%, you want to make sure you are properly oxygenating. You'll secure that ET tube. You can direct your partner to continue ventilations and maintain that while you secure your ET tube. Note your depth on your ET tube. It's going to be about three times the size of your tube, so our depth here at the lips is 21, and we've used a 702. Secure that in. And then secure.
secure that. And of course your partner is still oxygenating the patient. And you can go ahead and set them up on a vent or whatever might be necessary. Once you've secured it, you do want to go ahead and double check your lung sounds, make sure that you do have uh, bilateral lung sounds and your, your tube didn't shift at all. And of course watch your SpO2 readings. If there is a need for suctioning, you're going to go ahead and direct your partner again to uh, continue oxygenating best they can. Get your suctioning device ready. Take a flexible suction catheter, make sure that it's proper size for down inside the ET tube. Make sure your suctioning unit is properly assembled and, and uh, is working okay. Go ahead and take that out. You can lubricate this just a little bit if necessary. Once the, your partner's pre-oxygenated, you'll remove that. You're going to insert your suction catheter down the ET tube. You can go down until the resistance is felt or the patient might start to cough or anything like that. Make sure you're not suctioning on the way down in. And then only suction on the way out, covering that port there and taking no longer than 10 seconds to do it. As soon as you're done suctioning, begin having your partner uh, oxygenate the patient and then you're going to make sure you flush out that suction catheter with sterile water and that way you can reuse that if necessary. Once you've done that, you do want to go ahead and double check your lung sounds and your SpO2 readings, make sure that nothing has changed, nothing has shifted, and uh, then continue monitoring your patient to make sure there's no signs of hypoxia or any adverse reactions.